expected to be of the order of rupees 60 crore. I also propose to revise upward the existing specific rates of excise duty on tires, tubes, and flaps. However, I propose to reduce the duty on moped tires from rupees 30 at present to rupees 25 per tire. The proposal involves a revenue gain of rupees 40 crores. Special excise duty is being levied at present at the rate of 10% of basic excise duty. Certain essential items such as tea, coffee, sugar, matches, kerosene, and vanaspati are fully exempted. In addition, high-speed diesel and two-wheelers attract special excise duty at 5%. I now propose to raise the special excise duty on products which are presently attracting a 10% rate of duty to 15%. How are this increase will not be applicable to petroleum products. I also propose to exempt from this increase certain consumers' durables like motor cars and consumer electronics, such as television sets, as these industries are currently passing through a difficult phase. This proposal involves a revenue gain of rupees 1,025 crores. I may say the exemption for the motor car sector is at the request of the Chief Minister of West Bengal. <laughs> The changes in trade policy introduced last year. The changes in trade policy. The changes. The changes in trade policy introduced last year have eliminated the differential incentive for export at higher stages of manufacture. While a uniform pattern of incentive is generally to be preferred, there is a case for introducing some disincentive for export of certain primary products where the same product can be easily exported in value-added form. I therefore propose to import, impose an export duty of 10% on exports of certain types of finished leather and on unpolished granite in order to encourage exporters to shift to leather products and polished granites. I am also imposing an export duty of 5% on iron ore. The proposals are expected to yield an additional revenue of rupees 142 crores. Sir, I have also proposed certain amendments in the finance bill seeking to affect changes in the excise and customs tariff. These amendments are generally enabling provisions and have no revenue implications. Besides, there are proposals for amendment of some of the existing notification in order to save the time of the House. I do not propose to recount them. The proposals with regard to changes in excise duties outlined above are likely to yield additional revenue of rupees 2,515.70 crore. The concessions and relief announced aggregate to rupees 304.80 crore. Out of the net additional shareable revenue from excise duties of rupees 2,210.9 crores, the center's share would be rupees 1,146.53 crores and the state's share rupees 1,064.37 crores. So the net impact of my proposals on customs and excise duties taken together amounts to an additional mobilization of only rupees 187.55 crores on indirect taxes. Since the loss in customs revenues, customs duties falls entirely on the center, where the gain in excise re revenue is shared with the states, the impact on the center's revenue is a loss of rupees 876 0.82 crores, while the states will gain as much as rupees 1,064.37 crores. Copies of notification giving effect to the changes in customs and excise duties effective, effective from 1st March 92 will be laid on the table of the House in due course. Taking direct and indirect taxes together, the changes I have proposed are expected to result in a net revenue loss of rupees 517 crores to the center while the states will gain rupees 1,500 crores. Consequently, the estimated year and budget deficit of the center for 92-93 will be rupees 5,389 crores, and the fiscal deficit for that year will be 34,408 crores. Sir, our nation will remain eternally grateful to Jawaharlal Nehru for his vision and insistence that the social and economic transformation of India had to take place in the framework of an open society committed to parliamentary democracy and the rule of law. India's development is of tremendous significance for the future of the entire developing world. To realize our development potential, we have to unshackle the human spirit of creativity, idealism, adventure, and enterprise that our people possess in abundant measure. We have to harness all our latent resources 
for a second industrial revolution and a second agricultural revolution. Our economy, polity and society have to be made extraordinarily resilient and alert if we are to take full advantage of the opportunities and to minimize the risks associated with the increasing globalization of economic processes. We have to accept the need for restructuring and reform if we are to avoid an increasing marginalization of India in the evolving world economy. The economic policy changes brought about by our government under the inspiring leadership of Prime Minister Narasimha Rao in the last eight months are inspired by this vision. Sir, sir, our party is an inheritor of great traditions of national service. True to this heritage, we commit ourselves to providing a firm and purposeful sense of direction to the reform process so that this ancient land of India regains its glory and rightful place in the community of nation. This budget represents a contribution to the successful implementation of this great national enterprise of building an India free from the fear of war, want and exploitation, an India worthy of the dreams of the founding fathers of our republic. We shall pay any price, bear any burden, make any sacrifice to realize those dreams. India is on the move again. We shall make the future happen. Sir, I have come to the end of my labor. Tonight, I feel like going to the theater. Let the assassins be informed. I am prepared to meet their onslaughts. As the poet said, Sir Feroshi ki tamanna, ab hamare dil mein hai, dekhna hai, zor kitna, bazuwe, hatal mein hai. Sir, sir, I commend the body to this August. The additional revenue from the proposal is expected to be of the order of the P60. Specific rates of excise duty on tires, tubes, and flaps. However, I propose to reduce the duty on moped tires from rupees 30 at present to rupees 25 per tire. The proposal involves a revenue gain of rupees 40 crores. Special excise duty is being levied at present at the rate of 10% of basic excise duty. Certain essential items such as tea, coffee, sugar, matches, kerosene, and vanaspati are fully exempted. In addition, high-speed diesel and two-wheelers attract special excise duty at 5%. I now propose to raise the special excise duty on products which are presently attracting a 10% rate of duty to 15%. However, this increase will not be applicable to petroleum products. I also propose to exempt from this increase certain consumers' durables like motor cars and consumer electronics, such as television sets, as these industries are currently passing through a difficult phase. This proposal involves a revenue gain of rupees 1,025 crores. I may say the exemption for the motor car sector is at the request of the Chief Minister of West Bengal. <laughs> the changes in trade policy introduced last year. The changes in trade policy. The changes. The changes in trade policy introduced last year have eliminated the differential incentive for export at higher stages of manufacture. While a uniform pattern of incentive is generally to be preferred, there is a case for introducing some disincentive for export of certain primary products where the same product can be easily exported in value-added form. I therefore propose to import, impose an export duty of 10% on exports of certain types of finished leather and on unpolished granite in order to encourage exporters to shift to leather products and polished granites. I'm also imposing an export duty of 5% on iron ore. The proposals are expected to yield an additional revenue of rupees 142 crores. Sir, I have also proposed certain amendments in the finance bill seeking to affect changes in the excise and customs tariff. These amendments are generally enabling provisions and have no revenue implication. Besides, there are proposals for amendment of some of the existing notification in order to save the time of the house, I do not propose to recount them. The proposals with regard to changes in excise duties 
outlined above are likely to yield additional revenue of rupees 2515.70 crore the concessions and relief announced aggregate to rupees 304.80 crore out of the net additional shareable revenue from excise duties of rupees 2210.9 crores the center's share would be rupees 1146.53 crores and the state's share rupees 1064.37 crores so the net impact of my proposals on customs and excise duties taken together amounts to an additional mobilization of only rupees 187.55 crores on indirect taxes since the loss in customs revenues customs duties falls entirely on the center where the gain in excise re revenue is shared with the states the impact on the center's revenue is a loss of rupees 876.82 crores while the states will gain as much as rupees 1064.37 crores copies of notification giving effect to the changes in customs and excise duties affected affected from 1st march 92 will be laid on the table of the house in due course taking direct and indirect taxes together the changes i have proposed are expected to result in a net revenue loss of rupees 517 crores to the center while the states will gain rupees 1500 crores consequently the estimated year and budget deficit of the center for 9293 will be rupees 5389 crores and the fiscal deficit for that year will be 34408 crores sir our nation will remain eternally grateful to jawahar lal nehru for his vision and insistence that the social and economic transformation of india had to take place in the framework of an open society committed to parliamentary democracy and the rule of law india's development is of tremendous significance for the future of the entire developing world to realize our development potential we have to unshackle the human spirit of creativity idealism adventure and enterprise that our people possess in abundant measure we have to harness all our latent resources for a second industrial revolution and a second agricultural revolution our economy polity and society have to be made extraordinarily resilient and alert if we are to take full advantage of the opportunities and to minimize the risks associated with the increasing globalization of economic processes we have to accept the need for restructuring and reform if we are to avoid an increasing marginalization of india in the evolving world economy the economic policy changes brought about by our government under the inspiring leadership of prime minister narsimha rao in the last 8 months are inspired by this vision sir sir our party is an inheritor of great traditions of national service true to this heritage we commit ourselves to providing a firm and purposeful sense of direction to the reform process so that this ancient land of india regains its glory and rightful place in the comity of nation this budget represents a contribution to the successful implementation of this great national enterprise of building an india free from the fear of war want and exploitation an india worthy of the dreams of the founding fathers of our republic we shall pay any price bear any burden make any sacrifice to realize those dreams india is on the move again we shall make the future happen sir i have come to the end of my labor tonight i feel like going to the theater let the assassins be informed i am prepared to meet their onslaughts as the poet said sir feroshi ki tamanna ab hamare dil mein hai dekhna hai zor kitna bazu hai khatam hai sir sir i commend the budget to this others we started mojo right here in this basement just four people four and now we're about to hit our first 1 million subscribers so this is to say thank you to all of you for your support for your respect and for your encouragement we've always gone to where the story is during the pandemic when television's big anchors were hunkered down in their studios or at their homes we hit the road 
We travel from Delhi to Kerala covering 30,000 kilometers in a small car. Reporting from inside ICUs and inside slum tenements. Whether it's flash floods or war zones, we've always put our boots on the ground. In fact, we're just back from Punjab, tailing the Khalistani fugitive Amritpal Singh. And through all of this, we have always put you, the people, first. In an age of partisan polarized media where most journalists are either chamcha ya morcha, we believe the story is sacred and the truth of the story is what matters. And now as we get ready for the next step, we need your help. Become a Mojo member and get first access to all our big interviews. Get a chance to ask our newsmakers questions. Get a chance to write and report for us for both our website and our channels. And also, interact with me and my colleagues directly through AMA sessions, literally ask me anything. Click on the join now right next to the subscribe button and yes, also subscribe if you haven't yet and become a Mojo member for just 159 rupees a month. Hope to see lots of you in our community. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.